Hello and welcome back to Digital Assets Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. XRP Ledger developer sounds alarm over new Ripple scam. XRP giveaway scams are still very common on social media platforms such as Twitter. No need to even go into that. Ripple does no kind of giveaway. The only legitimate giveaway I'm aware of at this point, uh, the XRPnet uh, guys on Twitter, make sure you're on their actual page as well because they've also had um, scams as well pretending to be them in their giveaway. Never ever, if anyone asks you for your key phrases or your passwords, give that up because that's the number one telltale sign that it's not legitimate and it is a scam. But the current one going on right now is uh, XRPNet is giving... Uh, I think I saw earlier today, 1 million XR pay net. So if you want, go and check them out on Twitter. And you can get involved with that if you would like as well. Also to Ripple versus the SEC, crypto VC firm Paradigm granted motion to join the case. Um, basically, if you're going into James K. Filon's page on you know, Twitter, he has a lot of the actual files. Uh, connected to the case that he shares openly right on his homepage as well. Uh, but the particular court has granted a motion by lawyer Lewis Cohen to appear in the case on behalf of cryptocurrency venture capitalist firm Paradigm. Defense lawyer James Filon revealed in a tweet yesterday, December 28. Also to Ripple uh, states the SEC tries a flimsy way to expand its turf, says the legal expert. Uh, in a new article by Forbes legal expert, Rosalind Layton is criticizing the U.S. SEC for its questionable enforcement policy against the crypto industry and Ripple in particular. Meanwhile, frustration with the SEC and lawmakers is growing in the U.S. crypto industry. Despite the fact that various industry leaders have called for clear laws and guidance for regular, regulated progress, the agency led by Gary Gensler refuses to act. And again, if the SEC is designed and intended to protect investors, I would say for the past few years it's proven that they've done quite the opposite. There's a new discussion going on as well that some of the previous statements uh, from the SEC have shown and determined for um, uh, basically stating that Bitcoin is a security for the Bitcoin miners. So we'll continue to follow that and see how that plays out. Uh, we've always said that Bitcoin was designed to open the door for XRP to walk right through as XRP is a much better version of what Bitcoin was designed to. To do but again we've shown xrp designed for the institutional enterprise wholesale market and as uh, navin gupta says once they get past the noise of retail they can move into that enterprise wholesale institutional market and even into derivatives but again for me that's all the money so we've shared that many many times also to XRP news, Ripple lawsuit to end a settlement is the question as Wells moves 618 million XRP. Another one I'm going to pull up really quick. Um, hundreds of millions of XRP moved by a non-giants. And as you scroll down and get into the article, it states that the Wells also moved another 450 million XRP. So again, very, very significant. A lot of stuff's going on. Everyone knows this is almost over. We're just waiting for the public confirmation and then see the price start to rise as it goes live and it's used as intended for what it's designed to be done. <laughs> and then stated by We'd Say When, which coincides perfectly with everything we've always said, what we've shared from Bank of Canada, and even what David Schwartz has said. So here's how XRP can become a stablecoin, explains XRPL lead developer. So under specific conditions, we'd say when explains how uh, the XRP ledger, or I'm sorry, how XRP could become a stablecoin. 
um, in an interaction with one of his followers, a theoretical scenario in which XRP could become a stablecoin. We'd say when his concept followed after he stated that one XRP equals one XRP directly in the manner of Michael Saylor or uh, CZ Binance Chopping Zell. In fact, there are two scenarios proposed by the developer, which uh, both of which are rather impossible in their own right. And the first assumes that it all on off ramp and centralized and decentralized crypto venues would only sell XRP for a certain amount of fiat. Wind rejected that on the grounds that there are too many crypto platforms. And really what I want to get into is um, uh, basically he says the second scenario, let's finish that first. Sounds even crazier as it assumes that businesses and people will start valuing goods and services at a fixed XRP value. Obviously, such a development would require global consensus, which is unlikely ever to happen. That said, the developer's basic thesis that one XRP equals one XRP was about a more down-to-earth matter. And we'd say Wynn argues that XRP only begins to have value in dollar or 4x equivalent when it comes into contact with the world outside of the XRPL network where the cryptocurrency, end quote, lives initially. And again, David Schwartz has said many times, you know, as an example, the price of XRP, uh, if it were $10,000 having a million uh, decimal point, the first would be a penny. And then if you go up to his second scenario of XRP being a million dollars, then the first uh, point or ripple would be one dollar. And again, both aligning up to the equivalency of currency that is out there. And I've always taken the end game mentally to always be the equivalent of one million dollars per XRP. The Bitcoin world has always said that Bitcoin would be the 10 million end game. And that's something I've followed, you know, since I've been involved with cryptocurrency from the beginning. So I believe that. And I've always shown like the Bank of Canada had labeled Ripple and Stellar XRP XLM as stable coins back even when they tested. And I shared that even back as far as 2019 on the channel. And the thing is, you know, again, I believe that exactly that. You know, if the price of XRP on the XRPL, one XRP equals one XRP. But as he states, which is a, a very clear and simple way, once you go into the Forex market or the dollar market with XRP, the price would have to be significantly higher. And again, um, as Brad Garlinghouse has used, for example, many, many times, you know, they use that uh, the cryptocurrency is very volatile attack against Ripple and Brad Garlinghouse responds, but the speed of um xrp using um basically the ripple net the on-demand liquidity system the the software that ripple's designed to use with its native currency xrp then it's way less volatile than that of the dollar because the dollar has to basically transfer for like three to five days where xrp transfers in three to five minutes and even if you were to take it to you know a few seconds higher that's still very very fast i you know what i'm not sure i might have just said minutes but three to five seconds is what i meant to say if i said it improperly so three to five days of the dollar to transfer and go through its settlements and clearance versus an xrp three to five second instantaneous settlement and clearance is much less volatile because you're not waiting around for the price of the dollar to rise or fall in that significant amount of time and even if xrp did rise or or um, retrace in that amount of time it would be very minimal over just a few seconds versus days again you know probably preaching to the choir for most of you who do follow this you're probably already holding xrp and you're probably well versed and knowledgeable of what's going on but again i feel if it does have a price as jim rickards has said many times the example that many people have given is the $10,000 gold and then the new currency moving forward being gold backed. If they were to start with a price, we know that uh, Congress does have the power of the purse and the power to create currency. Then you have, um, you know, they can do the backroom deals. Jim Rickards states often that go into the back room, decide and agree and determine the price and they could come out and that's where it could be. And I know that 
constitutionally, they can adjust the price, I believe, if I'm not incorrect. It is one time they can fix a price and determine a price. From then on, it has to um, increase and accumulate uh, a higher price on its own and from the market value at that point. So again, guys, <clears throat> kind of rambling on this morning, but I know we're very close and I can feel it. Again, this just feels so different. And the the assets that we discuss here, they've constantly grown in what we consider this as a down market where a lot of other assets have been significantly financially hurt. Um, as we say, you know, do your own research, but the assets with use case and utility, they've continued to grow significantly, even if the asset price as their native token has been affected and uh, retraced significantly. The actual use case for the asset for those with solid utility has grown very, very significantly. And guys, much love to each and every one of you. Um, you know, this is not financial advice. It's for entertainment purposes only. But as always, before we go, I want to leave you with a final thought. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it must run faster than the fastest lion or it will be killed. Every morning a lion wakes up and it knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death. It doesn't matter whether you're a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you'd better be running. Much love and we will catch you in the next one.